um, and this is a little bit of an aside, but uh, but it's it's uh, it's been on my mind. What is the uh, the humanistic management uh, group doing in terms of their initiative around a business curriculum? And uh, you know what I'm talking about. We're both a yeah. member of that. And as I mentioned, I've been a member of the ops group, and that hasn't meant for a while. But you're more or less looking over the whole initiative, and it strikes me that we should be, to what extent is it parallel with this? And, 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 and to what extent can they feed one another? And so yeah. it's, it's a great big question. And I was curious what your take is on it. <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm thinking like, because I'm working on this parallel project and maybe it's helpful for all of us to, 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 to understand what's happening there because that is, I think, a huge opportunity to feed into it. We're also gonna have a session with the UN uh, coming up where we're trying to bring this together. Now, we're not using evolution as the only lens or complexity science as the only lens, right? So that's what in the manifesto sort of I'm saying, well, we're using a consilience of knowledge approach that E.O. Wilson was, was spearheading. So in that sense, I'm sensing there is a really coagulation around the question of who we are that can right. be answered from all of the scientific or knowledge uh, generating perspectives uh, that right. does overlap with the evolutionary perspective. And I don't disagree with David and others that evolution provides a integrative framework here um, in terms of where we came from, who we are, where we might be going. And that is the domain and has been the domain of the humanities forever. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that together. And um, if you allow me, I can share a little bit of a, of a framework. Please. Uh, of what we're currently working on so that I, I can answer your question a little bit more comprehensively and Ian and Elizabeth and, and Iran that you know where some of these things may connect. Uh, right. so that'd, that'd be I'm, great. Yeah, that'd be okay, great. So then let me just figure out where I have this. Because that, that can give us more perspective on what we need to be doing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I yeah, I don't want to hijack it. So that's why I'm also a little bit hesitant. Right. I, I share what I have uh, on the on the Slack thing, but I also don't want to mingle those too much if, if there is another direction we're going in. Well, good point, yes. So of the idea of consilience, I think that's a great idea because it's all bringing liberal arts and science education back into, into, yeah. uh, into production. So Ian and Elizabeth, I think some of Elizabeth, maybe you more than Ian, uh, but we're, we have been working with this notion of a new paradigm for Jesuit business education specifically. And uh, Elizabeth knows that this is just the humanistic paradigm <laughs> in a way, which very much builds on evolutionary insights as well. Uh, and I would say, even though David seems to dismiss it, quantum science and quantum physics has a lot to contribute in that sense as well. So many of the natural sciences have some kind of insight in terms of how we can interpret reality and the question of who we are, where we came from, where we're going newly. So here's, here's a very simple, simple way to frame how are we looking at traditional paradigm programs in business education. And they're all centered around functional disciplines, right? Whether it's finance, marketing, or typically it's finance and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you focus on the doing around job oriented skills, maybe presentation skills, teamwork skills, so you can be more marketable. And then at some point, maybe there is sort of a, an icing on the cake. And that's been happening more recently in the nineties when the term leadership came well more into focus because there was something missing in that whole conversation and and the i think others are saying this was a design that matched the corporation that kodak eastman kodak corporation of the 1970s where yes you or or ford motor company where you were to be educated at a university to go into the marketing department the finance department the operations department or something like that right and then they, they understood that there's something more that you need to know and that maybe whatever some of these skills and in the in the context of this this color scheme the knowing is central in this the doing is sort of peripheral but then uh, it is it is typically more more important than the being piece and uh, that is a language that that's been around that some people adopt within that framework, some people find it less helpful, but we have, are using it to just showcase the difference between what a new program would look like where the being is in the center 
and the the personal development discerning leadership aspect that's the core and around it are certain knowing skills and then they will be sort of quote unquote icing on the cake uh, uh, focused on doing experiential learning of, of some sorts. And then, yeah, you can, you can do some of this within functional aspects, sustainable finance operations, whatever you want to call it. But all of these right. functions are then ancillary, not central in this new paradigm program. Right. And then what, what do we have in terms of the conceptual foundations? Well, the foundations of the current core in business education are assumptions of economics, right? The assumptions of human nature, uh, the assumptions about markets and how we coordinate, the assumptions of a theory of a firm, if, if we're talking about a firm. And, and those are assumptions. They're not really evidence or facts. Whereas in the new paradigm-based uh, education, I see this concilience of knowledge, the evolutionary sciences, scientific insights that really help us answer the question of who we are as people and yeah. what an organization is, right? And so mm -hmm. then homo economicus is the baseline for understanding human beings versus homo sapiens, the, uh, and then a functional orientations versus a problem solving orientation and right. ethics and leadership as add-ons or saddlebag versus core to, to the program. Those are the, the differentiators that I see. And that's where mm -hmm. I see, that's where the contribution of, of evolutionary sciences is clearly it's the foundation uh, the intellectual foundation. Now, here are some courses that we developed around this as a rough outline for any program. And if we take three courses in the knowing domain, three courses in the being domain, and three courses in the doing domain, that may not f fully la uh, um, apply, but then that sort of context as one course, like what does the world look like? And then foundations where I think the evolutionary conversation needs to happen and then you have leading from within um ron i don't know if that's also your language mm -hmm. uh discerning leadership the journey without and then sort of ongoing training and development mentoring and leadership development that is just a rough cut knowing in addition to the context and the foundations one of the or a practice like a functional practice like marketing supply chain management accounting investing etc could be could be on the menu and then doing is is more managing teams organizational development and transformation change management or transformational uh management and then you have potentially an applied transformation project where where somebody is leading a quote-unquote social entrepreneurial social innovation related uh, project that's that's a very rough cut to to start a conversation and the learning goals here are care for self care for others care for creation and how we can assess that uh and then you have the language here of this uh, paradigm uh the the jesuit catholic social teaching oriented uh paradigm that's that's a short rough overview of what what we're currently working with, we do have a scorecard developed where we assess the graduate. Like what is the graduate able to do when he comes, <laughs> before he comes in, she comes in and when they're trained. And that's another document I shared with you. I, I don't know if I, I can, I can uh, open that up as well, but it's also again, care for self, care for others, care for creation, that's multi-level. And then knowing, doing, being, uh, being, quote unquote, being, knowing, doing in that in that sequence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that wow. make sense? Or yeah, yeah. How yeah. far along are you with it? <coughs> what? How far along in implementing it are you? Because I know you've got some programs with Pro Social now. Yeah. So I mean, there are bits and pieces everywhere. <laughs> It's an <laughs> archipelago. <laughs> so there is, I mean, your program, I think, is one of them that, that already does much of what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, so does, so does uh, the Vermont program. So does, I mean, other programs that exist in the space, BARD claims to do something like that. Um, the, uh, the Jesuit folks, they adopt some of the, the leadership development for sure, we're talking with Georgetown and, and Loyola Chicago and, and Fordham so that there's 
a little bit more of that. Uh, we have developed the core disciplines uh, newly in many cases. So that's just an update that like management, finance, economics, um, not yet marketing, not yet operations, um, but there is something about IT, et cetera, et cetera. So that's currently in the works, but that that's something that can happen within the existing framework. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. wow. So, uh, so I'm I'm a member of a subgroup, right? Which we mentioned uh, the, the, uh, the operations, right? The operations management. So, but and again, they haven't met recently. And uh, but are there other subgroups meeting? Subgroups, so to speak. I mean, I would. Uh, you know, I recall we kicked off as a big group and we said, let's form the subgroups. This was like, what, last summer or something? Yeah, last know. summer, yeah. Yeah, and and so um, are the others meeting? I mean, I feel like we're sort of- Yeah, so, so finance is, is almost done. There's a leadership group that's almost done. The management group already tested it's, it's and we're in the second iteration. We have folks in Mexico and in Canada uh, testing it. Uh, we have um, the economics course was taught. Jeffrey Sachs taught it with uh, with Tony Annette at Fordham just now. So that's that's basically the foundation of a um, of a new economics. The moral moral economics. That, uh, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And uh, it does include some of the evolutionary insights in Darwin and and all of that. But it 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 draws on the philosophical and the intellectual development uh, of of history of of theology of. Uh, philosophy in, in all kinds of ways. Yeah. Well, certainly, yeah, we don't want to hijack it on the one hand, but they're, they're moving, you know, it, we can't do the, this, this evolutionary part in a vacuum either. I mean, we need to be aware of all that. Indeed, mm -hmm. you, you just pointed out that in the, in the very, there's different disciplines, they've made progress. It would be nice to We've become disconnected from one another. I feel right. I mean, oh, okay. I so so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we we actually do have very regular meetings with some of the leaders of the of the various groups, and the communication may be inferior because now that you're telling me that, I, I get a sense that yes, we have not been doing a very good job in communicating outward to what's been happening, where the progress is. Yeah, so, like Christina is the point person, and and she she gets us together, but. I get a sense she's busy, and, and uh, we probably right. met like six weeks ago, and she mm. was writing a paper uh, that she sent me a draft of, which was really very interesting. I mean, mo moving in the direction of knowing, you know, of being, knowing, doing uh, in the ops field, right? And, and, and she was really taking a hard look at it, but but again, nothing has happened, and, and, and we're so is, is she one of the people that you're in touch with? Because she's yeah, only so she's the she's the quote unquote mission vice president for for University of Barcelona to which Esade uh, belongs, right? So right. she is actually the uh, or Ramon Lul, uh, and so she is in the steering committee. So she's in those meetings, and okay. my understanding is that she didn't present because she didn't feel like there was an update. Yeah, and yeah. she hasn't called us together, and, and it's, and I've been yeah. I've been sort of curious, you know. So, so maybe that's something that we want to do going forward because we do have progress in finance, in the leadership, in the management, in the account. No, in accounting. No. Economics, finance, uh, leadership, and management. Those four, and then now we want to focus on marketing, accounting ideally operations too yeah yeah but again that yeah. project is more like this is sort of the low-hanging fruit we we have those existing programs and we want to change and shift them from uh from without actually rocking the boat too much of of the overall program design and ian you may be happy to know but in our management redesign uh evolutionary theory features strongly and that's why, yeah, that's, you, you know, <laughs> that's why we're doing the DP based project. So this for, for, yeah. What would, what does David say about that initiative, that whole initiative? How does he view it relative to what we're doing? Do you know? Honestly, I don't know too much. I shared with him just in general that that is happening. And I think he keeps homing in on, it needs to have the evolution uh, framework, yeah. right? And, and I don't disagree. I just want to see how, how we can do this. Yeah, 
And my approach, I wrote that, you know, a few weeks back, that 12 pager where I really yeah, yeah. focused in on the evolution and just gave it, I put everything there that, that I could come up with, which, which could potentially be part of all this. And, and it was mm -hmm. a little disjointed, but, 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 um, and what I see is what I'm in, what I want to do next and just haven't yet is I want to review the whole, uh, come up to speed with you on the humanistic dimension and, and, mm -hmm. maybe, and then, and then draw that sort of out, like, how do they relate to the evolutionary? Okay, so mm -hmm. I've, I've started with the evolutionary, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and the pro-social and say, you know, how, what does a pro-social curriculum look like? And I've started with that and given it my best in that 12 pager. And then I, now I wanna go and say, okay, let's, 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 how do you characterize the other paradigm? And how do the two connect? How do they yeah. connect? Or the touch points between the humanistic and the language of, of speaking in the humanistic dimension and the uh, being knowing doing versus so that's where I'm at right now mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I need to dig in and I can't say where it's going to go but uh, um, Ron, what do you see because you know a little bit both of the literatures uh, and 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 certainly familiar with with Dwight's thinking what what do you see as the connection? Well. The what what I'm what we're trying to figure out um, is you know at, at what what level do we do we want to um, do we want to connect and uh, that's why you know Michael I'm so respectful of the work you've done because this gets into the mess of departments and credit hours and you know quickly you know spins into the whole academic morass and so I keep thinking you know what what are the entry points back to what you were talking about before elizabeth is it a course or is it mm -hmm. what can this group contribute what is our you know so-called core competence mm -hmm. that others don't have? and so I, I keep thinking and thinking about that because um I, i'll give you a, a, two examples one is that we're working with andy hoffman uh who you know you was on mm -hmm. your program mm -hmm. well he there a lot of people are, are going to a higher level uh, back to your question, Elizabeth, what is our entry point? I mean, you know, I feel like we're almost like a, uh, forgive me, we're almost like a, a new product venture. And how are we going to enter the market? Where, where is our entry point into the market? And um, one is that they're doing a lot of work uh, when, with courses on re-examining uh, capitalism. You know, that's Andy's, you know, Andy's proposed this at Ross. He's following, you know, Elizabeth or uh, Rebecca Robinson at Harvard. And people have been, there's all kinds of people working on this. And so is that an entry point? And that's where, you know, Ian, you keep us, um, keep, keep thinking about what is the perspective this group can bring to it. Our entry point, the way I would think about it, is back to the integrative project. Mm -hmm. And the turn that, that we, that, that we're offering is student-centric as opposed to content-centric. And uh, there are tools all over the place. And what we've tried to do, forgive me, to put the 30-day Jesuit retreat into some manageable form of discernment. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how we've thought about it. And maybe that's why I was so pleased with David um, liking this paper on evolutionary love. And David starts out his pro-social book with Chardin. Mm -hmm. Michael Hoffman, or Andy Hoffman, finishes book on calling with Thomas Berry. And I go, wait a minute. If these two geniuses, one starts with Chardin, the other one starts with Berry, in a society of you know, evolution of some deeper level. So I, and all I can think of is David's levels of, um, Natural, you know, a group a group selection. Multi -level yeah, selection. Yeah, multi level, you know, multi level selection. And I keep thinking that, that this group, and again, I'm saying for the second time, Ian, you keep us straight on this, but that we're really going to a really high level of saying the bits and pieces are all there. Just like, you know, Michael, I read your first chapter again, and I thought it's all there in your mm -hmm. book. So, so what do we bring as a focus? My, our view at Presidio was we ended up focusing on the student. And I'll offer this to you, Michael, uh, with Prime, you remember the future we want. Remember that was a basic theme for Rio uh, 20, down in Rio. I don't know if you were there or not, but that was no. the whole thing. Okay, but you know the theme of it. Yeah. Of, mm -hmm. It was the future we want. Mm -hmm. And so 
I keep thinking that, that this group or the what we approached at Presidio, we said, if you want to come and find, and we use the word calling, and I may as well just lay it out there, uh, that we focused on that idea. It was student-centric. What do you want to do in the world? And then the toolkit is fine. Give them all the tools, everything else, you know, me, society, uh, me, organizations, that's a typical way they build it. But we put the whole thing around and forgive me, but I'll just jump these terms out, is that it's neo-Aristotelian Thomism. It's what is the highest good? What do you as a student want to see in the world? And it starts out with that. And so what we're trying to do in the, is, you know, formal existential ethics, virtue ethics, there's various ways. These are not trivial. They are there what inspires the students. So what we said at Presidio is you student come in with something, some view you see of the world. That is, that is, you know, Aristotle, that's Confucius, that's, this is not new. And we will help you through all of this, develop your idea so that when you are in some context, you can help people think about it. And that's what we called the big idea. And it was called an arc. We called it an arc of pragmatic inquiry, experiential learning. And that's all it was, but it was student centric. And as someone told me, he said, well, you just brought together academic affairs and student affairs. Student affairs is supposed to help students with their careers. You know, what do you want to do after you graduate? And academic affairs teaches you stuff. Mm -hmm. and we just put it together and someone said, uh, you've just recreated Oxford in the 17th century. I mean, okay, well, so this stuff is not new. So mm -hmm. I, I'm babbling. Yeah. That's the piece that, that, that we went for. And I think what we're trying to do is figure out what level of selection are we, do we want to focus on? Get, that's why specifically, if I can do a screen share, am I allowed to screen share? Let me check, you should be. Because I want to show yeah. you. Okay, I can, all right. Um, I want to show you, here it is. We're supposed to give student, uh, here's a response. Um, here, okay. There is David Sloan Wilson. He wants feedback from us by Thursday mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the manifesto and the blueprint. Mm -hmm. I have had trouble at the very beginning with his opening statements of the basic definition. Mm -hmm. And back to level selection is that people are realizing, certainly at Presidio we realize, and everybody else, is, it's multi, uh, it's multi-sector solutions. So mm -hmm. what, what I would propose immediately is that we're not about business, we're about organization. Yes. That, and so I think that, and that's why, you know, Michael, I pressed you early on to say that you can pick up some language directly out of what you're doing and management. I agree with that, but it's not, it, but it's, it's providing the goods and services that society needs, which is mm -hmm. why we've come together on this stuff. So I felt that, that, that needed, needed work. Um, mm -hmm. I like the, I think it's so important. It's how we form everything everybody's doing. I think is great. But then what all we said is pick some problem student and figure out what that looks like. So mm -hmm. that's a, um, and you know, he's very kind to say about our pragmatic inquiry, fine. But the basic idea is that it's student centric, helping them find the work they're to do in the world. And that to me is the promise of the evolutionary uh, instinct that we have that they lay out in Chardin and uh, Thomas Berry, the great work. And I can show you, I mean, if you look at Andy's final paragraph, and he quotes that thing about what each student, uh, the work we're called to do in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think help them do. We can say that that is an evolutionary instinct. Now, Ian, you watch us on this, but is that if that is an evolutionary instinct of wanting to care for others in uh, and we now are conscious of the fact that we're helping build the future we want. And that Andy or uh, Michael, that you can lean on with the whole prime and uh, the whole what they talked about at the UN. So one thing that's, that's kind of that's showing up for me right now, and this is this is an element of evolutionary thought that's kind of it's not really highlighted in pro-social and um, and in David's talks because I think he kind of takes it as a as as a given. Um, but uh, th there's this notion of niche construction theory. Or, well, there's niche construction theory within the evolutionary world, and that's um, if you're not familiar with it, it's just 
kind of recognition that organisms are not passive recipients of what the environment throws at them. They're engaged in a co-creation and kind of co-defining um, process um, where, yeah. you know, organisms and environment are, you know, like I said, they co-construct and co-define each other. Um, and, you know, humans are cultural, we use culture to kind of reconfigure our relationship with our environment. And we can do, we can leverage culture to do that relatively quickly. And that's kind of like our signature adaptation. That and the fact that we, you know, share these shared symbolic meaning systems that allow for kind of multiple actors to go out and kind of create the world that they want to see. Um, so that I think, you know, it's kind of, you can view niche construction and cultural niche construction in the human sense as the ever, other side of the multi-level selection coin, right? It's like, it's what are organisms doing? How are they interacting with the environment? That's where the selectionist rubber meets the road, right? So the minute you change, start changing how you interact with your environment, you've changed your kind of as existential strategy, so to speak, right? Um, but you've, you're also changing the, the way you're shaping the world, right? And so it's, that it's a is given. Really Brilliant. But it's, yeah, it has, it's kind of obvious, um, but it's very, has kind of very powerful narrative um, capacities because it's what, you know, we're all familiar with the modifications that termites and beavers and, you know, those organisms um, make to the environment, but humans are doing that on a scale that's, you know, no other organism can touch. And it's, okay, how do we then take the reins of that process and hook our construction activities, you know, to a well-articulated value system that has right. that kind of higher, highest level possible wellness in mind. That's the kind right. of reality that we want to construct. Exactly. Ian, that's that's uh, human energy. <laughs> well, that's, hard. <laughs> that's brilliant. And see that that's and see, that's where you get beyond. You know, poor Andy Hoffman has been. It took him so long to sell a course where business and government were brought together. What you just described is that comes later, right now. Is humans are just gathering together in various ways to get something done, and then they can figure out how to organize it, whether it should be business, government, or nonprofit. That's why I did not like this idea that business and management. Uh, it, it needs, you know, so it it. it, it it's almost like, you know, Ian, I don't know if you can take us an assignment to get that down to, you know, a paragraph or two. What did you call it? Niche? Niche creation? Niche, niche or niche construction depends on what side of the pond you're from. Right. Um, well, that you might you might uh, take that as a specific uh, to to that element, because that's what, you know, what what we're. What, what we're saying is that the kids come in the way we've approached it is you come in and they're unhappy. You know, we, we've heard more stories. I'm sure you all have. I was tired of being in investment banking or I didn't want to work in advertising anymore. So it's back to your story, Michael. You start out with your three mm -hmm. people. In chapter one. That's what they come in with. Well, what do they want? They want to create a better world. And you're just describing, Ian, that that is that is our human uh, distinction is to be able to not just with the environment, but with ideas and be able to construct uh, uh, organizational, you know, organizational systems. One yeah. of the things I think um, that would be helpful is for us to link the evolutionary concepts to existing management and sociology concepts. So, for example, you know what um, Ian was just um, teaching us about niche construction theory that actually has a lot of parallels with structuration theory, like the tension between agency and structure, and then also institutional entrepreneurship. So, how can people change organisms or organizations from within? And I think that would be very interesting to look at these evolutionary concepts and see, you know, how do they translate to organizations? I think there's a lot of overlap and parallels. They're just not called out. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more, Elizabeth. We see this all the time when you like this thing on, on values. Uh, the, way, the way we approach that is what, what finally drives what you want to do. And they've been, you know, concerned about this issue of defining, you know, justice uh, and what it would mean. And it was happiness. Uh, the Atlantic's got a whole, you know, two-day uh, session coming up this weekend on what is happiness. Well, everybody's trying to figure this stuff out. What makes you happy is to have a higher purpose. And so there's a lot of ideas out there already where people have, are, are, are working on these ideas. That's what, I, I mean, Michael, that's why you're a living, 
uh, encyclopedia on this stuff <laughs> with the whole that you've used and to see how you would use, you know, what, what crispness, what insight, what uh, way, if you had an, a, 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 what Elizabeth is saying, how does that change anything? I keep the, what Dwight and I have talked about forever. Dwight has tried to bring in big history into Presidio. And he thinks that if somebody has the 13.9 billion year history, that changes their perspective somehow. Mm -hmm. And working on that idea. Um, that's that's fantastic. I, 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 I love that. Um, what else do you think is, 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 uh, is, is key? Dwight, why don't you pick up I'll Just a in. side note, that's that's how we started um, some of our Evolution for Everyone courses, was just start with like, you know, getting, introducing them to like, even more abstract stuff, like um, picturing the size and scope of the universe. And like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is what, you know, our most advanced instruments and scientists are telling us that we exist as part of. You know, and then zooming down onto Earth and say, okay, here's where it formed. You know, we go this over pretty quickly, but then look at all, like when all the major kind of, you know, organism groups kind of appeared and students love it. They just, you know, it's like the, that deep history is really drives home the kind of shared fate and the unity of existence, which is something that you need, you need to highlight if you want to get people thinking about, you know, ultimate well being. Yeah. Could you put that course into uh, into the Slack? Uh, what like do you mean? Like a syllabus or something, Ron? Um, I don't I know if I have one on this. I'll look for it. No promises. It might have been on a previous computer. What I've done, going to the big history for a minute, um, I've gotten to know David Christian and 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 uh, that crowd, and I. Um, for the last about 10 semesters, I've been giving a, a talk to our entering um, uh, students in their entering orientation. And basically it's it focus, it, it, it acquaints them with big history. And basically um, I helped to edit uh, one of a, a, a colleague's books, uh, another uh, colleague of mine, Russell Janae, who wrote his own version of a big history book. It's called uh, Humanity, but it, it indeed started with the Big Bang and so on and so forth. And then, um, so I've had personally the experience of sort of learning big history, if you will, and and I found it was it was um, transforming, even even for me, uh, 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 getting a sense that you are essentially when you learn big history, what we've just been saying is you you can't help but be, know feel that we're part of nature first of all, and you can't and you and you just it just turns you into a caring being, caring for life. Uh, that's my response to learning big history, and and I one of the ways I do that is I give uh, David Christian's uh, eighteen minute TED talk on big history. So he he explains he does big history in eighteen minutes, a very nice job of it. And so the the, the what I'm teaching, acquainting our students with, is this notion that there's ways to um, uh, to transform us into uh, caring people. For example, teach all our children big history by the time they're 12 years old, uh, because they have that think in the, in, in the way you're forced to think when you learn big history in multiple time scales and, and all that. Um, so and so that's so that's a source of hope for our students. And indeed, here's an example of, of, of a new discipline that's out there and bouncing around big history, and uh, and this is the impact it can have on people. Uh, you can actually, you know, because the learning phenomenon is, it's, it's, it's not only cognitive, it's affective, it's, it's, you know, it's a learning on a broad basis. So that, that's one thing. And then the other, the other topic I bring up is, is the, the whole background of, of uh, uh, with Pete Richardson in my case, and now David, um, the tribal social instincts and where that all came from. And, and then it's a real deal. And, and, uh, and it's about time we got it into our economics, you know. And uh, um, uh, and you know we need to redefine business and economics or, uh, to give it equal equal uh, influence with the rational instincts hypothesis, <laughs> once and for all, right? And, and uh, so I give I talk about the big history and I talk about tribal social instincts as two um, uh, insights, two developments that give give hope to our students. And mm -hmm. that's, so that's, that's 
that's why uh, that's why I do that. Well, one yeah. just a follow up, and, and Ian, you you've got to keep us uh, on, on on track in terms of this niche that we think. The way that, that one of our mentors have talked about it is left brain, right brain, and how the how the brain has evolved, and uh, that that we've all that what we teach so often is is left brain to one small part of our left brain, uh, the analytical part, as opposed to the right brain, and he follows it from uh, Homo erectus to Homo habilis to you know all the way through to find the Homo sapiens, and so one of the things that we've looked at is how to use all parts of the mind full. Full mind, so neuroscience. <coughs> As an example, uh, Presidio is now teaching. They've got an educational program K through 12 on how to teach sustainability, and two of the big things they're bringing in are systems thinking and whole mind thinking, which is sort of like design thinking in a way. So, what I, I'm trying to sort of figure out how how can we make progress and organize some of the the bits and pieces that are are there. Yep. I think the big history, the cosmology perspective, the quantum physics, all of this, I think is probably sort of a foundation of, of what people want to be in. Uh, maybe it's a foundation course, maybe it's a context course. What I can see in terms of the, the various pieces here is a past, like where, we, where do we come from? <laughs> where are we? Where do we go? Right, so there's like a, a perspective on the big history, ancient evolution, all of that. Like big history in a bigger context, cosmologically, <laughs> uh, physically, but then also humans or life yeah. as, as such. And then where do we come from and what are the options? Where are we right now in <laughs> anthropocentric, uh, what is it, the entro, the, the era of the enter anthropocene? anthropocene. Yeah. And, and all of the issues with that. And then what are the possible options for a future? And what is the future we want, Ron? You were talking about that. And then maybe there's sort of like an approach towards design thinking, uh, systems thinking, I don't know, all the kinds of ways of thinking and, and creating and innovating. Um, so that's just a way that I can see the knowing piece supported. Because this is, this is, of course, it's going to translate into how you are more hopeful, like Dwight is saying. I do think there are more direct ways of getting at creating energy, hope, etc., with the various processes, Ron, you were mentioning. But if if it makes sense, and I'm just forcing my my own framework onto this right now, and it may not make sense this way, but if mm -hmm. we use knowing as a way to sort of then separate out, there's a focus on the past, the big history, the big picture, the evolutionary insights that answers something of who we are, where we came from, and then where do we go, like the focus, and then figure out what is it that we can do in terms of what do we know about the current dangers? What do we know about how we have addressed them before and, and how can we address them now? So there is sort of like the, the future perspective. Um, and then there would be something around the development that you were saying, Ron, uh, the inner journey, what is it, the being, calling, et cetera, et cetera, right. developing your right. being, identifying your being, uh, identifying your calling, your contribution, what the world yeah, needs. <laughs> First you, then what the world needs, how you connect them, the ikigai, whatever that is. That's what we've attempted to do. We've right. attempted to, to, to package discernment. And right. the Jesuits have done it for 500 years. Aristotle tried to do it. Plato tried to do it. This is confusing. I mean, these are old processes. We've just tried to say, okay, how does how does some poor kid say, well, I'm concerned about food or women's rights or childhood mm -hmm. education, what the hell it is, but get them onto their path and then use all business language, organization language, back to what you were talking about before, Elizabeth. There's a lot of work being done on this, and it's a way of just helping people wake up. Mm -hmm. How old is that? You know, wake up and look around and, oh, my gosh, we can organize ourselves in a different way. But, Ian, I'm going back to your niche construction. I love that. We're changing the beaver dam. You know, oh, my gosh, we're connected in a, connect the pond in a different way. Yeah. So another way of, like, I'm throwing this out there. Uh, enlightenment, enlivenment, and empowerment as the three E's that I like to use. <laughs> Um, and that's what I'm hearing a little bit and, uh, in terms of the being, doing, 
and and mm -hmm. known. Yeah. And I don't want to overdo it, so please stop me here. But um, the the doing, oh, if if it's empowerment, yeah. people are coming out of this, like you were saying, Ron. They they are hopeless. They're coming into the program. They first get a sense of where we're coming from and why that hope is maybe misplaced, like Pinker would say and others, right? And how we are actually moving upward, like Tailhut would say, there is this sort of like actually it's it's not we're not the fallen species, we're not like going That's back not... towards a an ideal state, but we're actually improving step by yeah. step, and just being aware of that can give you more access to power and, and understanding and hope. Yeah. And they and the, the the foundation of it all is they have some instinct now. What we start out with is you may be against something, but if it's student-centric, they've got something that sparks them. And we say that that we, you know, you can do the various words, but you've got some idea, some instinct, and it can be an, I don't care what it is, but they've got something that they're interested in. And that's the flame that we want to have them understand. They can create a thriving niche around that idea. And that's going to be, they're going to build their career around that. So that's, that's the way we've looked at it. It's a, it's a mind and heart set, not a tool set. Then the tools can come in. So we refer to that as student centric. And then I may as well throw this out. Then what, what we say is that you then are working on some project that will tell you what you value, what your values are. So we're, we, we do not do uh, values clarification and all that stuff. We say, it's the old story, tell me your strategy, tell me your budget, and then I'll tell you what your values are. So it, it's what you do is the expression of your thoughts. Okay. So I can see that a course around what Ian you you mentioned the the evolution of the human experience is that what just <laughs> yeah that's what I have tentatively called my dream course that I've been designing ah, over the last right. you know both, both like an all in capital level letters so it explains the individual human experience like making sense of uh -huh. your day to day um, but then also collectively what that what it means to be hum human and part of you know this world. Is this where your niche niche uh, construction comes in? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all it, it's it's basically like evolution for everyone 2.0. That's kind of what it you know what it is. Have you written on that enough that you can share? Uh, no, it's all in it's all in my head. I talk to myself when I'm walking and and stuff. Now's like. the time to get it, it out. Now's the time to put yeah. a half page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, that's, that's why I kind of latched onto this, this group as I thought, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an opportunity. Well, so, to... so here's, here's the deal. This is going to be a foundation course <laughs> for the new paradigm program, Ian. So you, you have an opportunity to uh, yeah. get it out. And what's well, was showing up for me earlier too, is as, as you were describing these kind of different framings and different modules that we might put together is that it really, and I, I assume this is the case, but it really lends itself to, um you know a study like are we meeting you know does a deep history promote um you know care and ego reduction like there are really testable hypotheses so we can kind of study the effects of different combinations of these modules to kind of really hone in on a super powerful course you know over time or a couple of years or whatever that we're you know kind of that's that excites me because it's it's one thing to come up with you know a lovely course that you know you think matches and ticks all the theory boxes yeah. and students will love it and whatnot but is it really you know doing and pulling these levers pushing these things that we're, we're describing here okay we've got two things we, we have two nobel laureates going for us one we know a lot about eleanor ostrom and you know lynn's work would would, very, would she would give evidence to what you were just talking about uh ian that's one the other one if you're familiar with robert fogel who's a nobel laureate and one third of this book is uh, social statistics. And it's called The Fourth Great Awakening, The Future of Egalitarianism, which mm -hmm. is the idea of Nobel laureates stuff at the University of Chicago. So there's evidence that we are move, moving through these cycles. Like one of the things that I know people have talked about before is in any introductory course to show students we've gone through the Gilded Age before. What do we just, this is not new. Uh, people don't know about, you know, the social gospel. That's why I love 
you know, Laudato Si in the Jesuit tradition, in the Catholic tradition, is that we've been fighting this battle for, you know, centuries. Forever. It's a human thing, right? It's a human yeah. experience. <laughs> Yeah, so we at this moment we're giving new language to it of this, but I love your thing of the niche creation, Ian. I mean, that's a but that's what you're asking people to do. What we have the students do is the first course we have them do is what is the system now that you think is screwed up, whether it's women's fashion or food or whatever it is, find your intervention point and come up with a plan to change it. That's business, government, civil society, multi level selection, but that's the student centric piece. Teach them all the other tools that you need, but it's helping the student figure out. What area do they want to work in? So here is something that I'm hearing, and I, I just want to get us back to, if we can, <laughs> put this into a course program. Because I do think the question that you started with, Ron and Dwight and, and Ian, maybe, is like, where do we put this? Where do right. you put the evolutionary perspective? And I think it has to be in the foundations course, however we want to call it. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be a foundation so that people can start then putting in the various other bits and pieces that we're talking about or that others might take and then say, all right, well, here is where we're coming from. Let's say, I'll, saw, I'll say it like the enlightenment piece, the foundation, the evolution of human experience, like the, uh, Ian, you were, you were saying, I'll just borrow that for now. It's a past, look, look at the past, which is informed by, let's say, all the knowledge tradition, but specifically uh, the evolutionary multi-level selection process that then maybe connects them all and complex science or whatever David sort of suggests also that can be introduced there. Then if we have the focal points that you guys are talking about, Dwight and Ron, and we have a focus on where are students student centric rather than knowledge centric here here is where you're coming in always sort of figure out what is it that you actually want to learn what is the problem that you're currently experiencing supporting right. them and 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 oftentimes people say the system is screwed up but that's a very easy and oftentimes uninformed uh, assessment so how do you get people if i were to use this from a past based to a, a present based perspective to a potential future perspective so that would be a certain second or follow-up course in a way that they are experiencing the knowing domain and then they would go into their personal journey they would go into what the world needs and how they can make this work they would then yeah. also figure out what my colleague <laughs> also Nobel laureate um uh jerry white uh, says and calls transpreneurship I don't know yeah. if you've heard of that term, but what you're describing, Ron, is very much that. It's like, how do you how to be a niche creator <laughs> in a sense that you are not only pulling in one, well, actually that you're a smart multi-level niche creator, that you are able yeah. to create niches across government, education, uh, nonprofit, for-profit sectors, and figure out how what is a solution that is currently not yet uh, there, but from a future fulfilled perspective should be there after you've understood what kind of future you want to create and then really sort of get the skills home in on the skills and how you once you've gotten that how you're going to create this future and that may require all kinds of skills but it it uh and, and i'm just throwing this out there you guys probably dwight and, and ron have the most experience in terms of how you would create a curriculum that allows for people to gain those skills but that would be sort of the, the doing perspective. And if that latches into a multi-level selection, if that latches into like the overarching or well, builds on the foundation that we are part and co-creators, I think even Ian, you said that, co-creators of the human experience, that gives right. agency, that gives power, that gives hope, that gives an ability once people are actually trained in that perspective, but also in the, not only trained in that perspective, but also trained in, in their behavior. That's right. that... Yeah, you have just described Presidio. Thank you very much. So then, all we need to do is Presidio uh, times. Well, no, but really, no, it's so cool. But, but the, the, that's what, but really, it is. It, so I don't know how we're going to package this, but as a specific, you know, to do something for David, we only got two minutes left, and David likes to keep us on time. Mm -hmm. But can, I don't know if each one of us could. It, it, what I was going to work on. But I've, I've been unhappy with the manifesto. Back to Elizabeth, you know what you were saying. Sort of at the end to say, we we um, I, I don't think that we've got the right frame for it yet. But so I, I don't know how we can package everything we just said now, Michael. Uh, well, I mean, saw? I think if you guys have the program, 
then I'm sure you have a one page or of the journey, so to speak, because it's a journey, right? It's not a curriculum. Yeah. It's a journey, a learning right. journey. And so right. if you can share that, if it's not IP protected or something, that might be a starting point. Now, what we've got is I'll show you. Uh, and and I, I know it's like one minute left, so I also. No, no, I know we want to get, let me just show you. I'll, I'll put the link in, I'll, I'll send the link around. But is that this is what we've, uh, here it is for the city. Go, folks. Sorry. Mm -hmm. the world. There right. it is, I'll send the link for it. But that's our story. Right, and I think I read it. And I'm, I'm, I think what would be helpful is if you had, I don't, I don't know, like what am I sharing here? This, this kind of a one page overview. And I'm just saying here, if, if there was something organized around three by threes or whatever we just talked about, yeah, that could help us and then design courses. I mean, right now it becomes clear to me and it's 5.30. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Ian is, is describing, the, the foundation of the evolutionary uh, experience through the human lens, but also including a bigger framing so that we can position that as beyond human mm -hmm. but right. and beyond life actually it's beyond life too <laughs> i mean does anyone have any experience with some like collective or collaborative mind mapping tools i feel like that would be useful here because we've got tons of different constructs at different levels and you know if we can just spit them all out on a page and start drawing associations between them then we'll see you know which modules form well, do you do you no uh <laughs> all right so we have a gap we identify this gap and then maybe we can put this in the chat and see who can who can do this I've, i want to keep us to time too it's 5 31 so i'm 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 slapping myself and uh, <laughs> what are the, the to do's ron if you can share in a one pager what the journey is what the curriculum looks like for presidio if you and and my my curiosity would be if you're teaching it all how much are you using the evolutionary perspective as a foundation? Yeah. Then maybe all we need to do is just use what you guys are doing. And then we can uh, see what works and what doesn't work. Well, Dwight and I will get on it because it's somewhere in his 12 pages too. He's, he's been, we've been talking about that. Right. And, right. and, and I do think it would help us to get to very short, like this is, this is the organizational framework that's being used. Because yeah. I, I got the inquiry, I got the methodology, yeah. uh, and I'm not clear where the evolutionary perspective is. Yeah, well, the evolution, well, it's in, it's in, it's in, I'll tell you, the, where I come out on it, it comes out with the calling. Uh, it's, the, it's the Chardinian view, and that may be way too heavy duty uh, to package, but that's where I come out. Yeah, no, I think, I think we probably all align on that. And I don't know if that has an evolutionary foundation in a sense that students actually know to distinguish the multi-level selection piece from from anything else it, it may be just an intuitive intuition well that's where i think uh ian i, I will look at your course uh, which you're going to send us but there is the whole premise is that there is this instinct to care for one another and yeah, yeah. and i think i mean i i don't know which program doesn't teach that by now so that's the question, that's right? right? Your point of, yeah, it does. That's right. And that's how we, we then can, can build together. All right, well, I'll talk to Dwight. And what we'll do is we'll work on his, he's written some things. We've got a lot of material on that. We'll try to get it down to one page, but essentially it's student centric around their, what they want to do in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think the specific question is like evolution, evolution, where does it fit in? Where would it fit in? Right, because I, th I hear at least what you're saying, Ron. This is something that may be missing, or that can advance and and uh, and and help uh, yeah. with the with the educational perspective. And and maybe yeah. maybe I, I didn't hear correctly, but that's I'm just sort of inquiring. And that's and I keep okay. We'll work on that. I'll work on that with Dwight. That will take our task. Uh, we should get something back to Michael or back to uh, uh, David. Um, who uh, do you have notes, Elizabeth, that you can send him so we can say we've? Uh... Yes, I do, and I'll put the to dos too. So what we've covered, and I do want to also keep in with Ian suggesting about the collaborative mind map. So maybe that's something somebody mm -hmm. could research about what kind of software might be available. Yeah, 
I'll look at that. I've I've been I've been using Miro boards um, mm. for some stuff. They, yeah, they yeah. might be useful here, and ProSocial yeah. has a, an account for that. So. Oh, okay. Right yeah, that's going to go along with the course you're going to teach. That's brilliant. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all. It's four minutes after, so I thank you for staying longer, and uh, see you. See you next week. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for that Bye. discussion.